good. Um, good morning, Jessica, and thank you for inviting me here to share our transformation experience with you all this morning. Um, for those of you who don't know me, let me introduce myself. Um, if we move on. I'm a certified chartered accountant with over 10 years experience in senior management roles and almost 10 of these years have been spent in the credit union sector. I also have an MBA from Smurfit Business School and I currently hold a position of CEO with Life Credit Union. My main function there is to help the credit union develop and implement its strategies. Prior to Life Credit Union, I worked for Savvy Credit Union as the Deputy CEO and Head of Finance, growing their loan book from 33 million in 2012 to 67 million in 2018. Before that, I was the Group Financial Controller of Twinlight, managing a consolidate turnover of 85 million. And prior to this, I spent several years in various senior finance roles. During my career, I've managed senior teams, helping them to achieve their intended outcomes as well as delivering a range of key services, including the setting of strategic direction, financial control, financial governance and risk, and more importantly, business transformation, thereby contributing to the effective management and success of the organizations for which I have served. So if we look at the credit union I'm with um, on the next slide, Life Credit Union is your typical community credit union. We've assets of just under 200 million and we've almost 36,000 active members. But like everyone else here, one third of our members borrow from us, about a third of them save, and the remainder don't actively engage with us. And if we move on to look at the, the environment that we um, operate in, um, if we move to the next slide, please. The credit union operates in the same environment as you do. And when I joined the sector in 2012, the competition was mainly the high street banks. But today we're also competing with fintech challenges um, for our members' attention. And according to an Eniston Young Global survey, consumers are more likely to use multiple providers for their financial services, with 24% of consumers using five or more different providers. And this willingness to purchase products from multiple providers shows that brand loyalty is no longer a factor when it comes to choosing financial products. It is ultimately word of mouth which plays a substantial role in the selection of financial providers, with 31% of Irish consumers relying on family and friends, colleagues for advice. This means that credit unions and building societies need to be mindful that in today's marketplace, certain product characteristics are now considered by the consumer to be prerequisites for any digital service offering, including that they be simple, transparent, personalized, but most importantly, that they are frictionless and omni-channel. On the next slide, we look at our, how we started our journey in Life Credit Union. We did this by getting to know our members, and we found that based on the key, our key characteristics, we're able to segment our members into three key groups. The future member, now these guys, these, these guys prefer to manage, manage many aspects of their lives with technology. If we cannot communicate and trade with them in their environment, they're going to go to our digital competitors. The target member, these guys are both digitally and financially savvy, and they're looking for convenience. They want an alternative to the mainstream bank, and they will go elsewhere if we're not able to serve them digitally. And then we have the traditional member. These folks, they're comfortable with the status quo. They don't really want to change, and they're not interested in dealing with the credit unions digitally. On the next slide, we're going to look at the economic landscape, which is in massive flux. Members' habits are evolving as new technologies and trends emerge. And to achieve success, the credit unions and building societies must not only keep up with these changes, but we're going to have to figure out how to capitalize on them. Previously, convenience meant going into the branch to transact, but this is no longer the case in our credit union. In Life Credit Union, today, 75% of our transactions occur online. 55% of our loan sales have been generated online. 60% of the people who borrow for the very first time with the credit union applied for that loan online. 50% of the applications from the target members are coming in online, but 80% of the applications from the future member are coming online. So on the next slide, we look at our project and what we did. So to meet the demands of our members for a digital service, we undertook a full process review. The management designed our vision of what the ideal customer journey should look like, and then we created a gap analysis between what it should look like and what we were doing now. 
And in June 20, we changed our IT service provider and adopted their integrated online loan modules for customer onboarding and loan origination. However, there were still some limitations in the new IT platform. It was mono-channel, could only deal with our members on the MEB. The simultaneous new member loan journey that we wanted for our members wasn't catered for in this online module. The joint and the guarantor loan journey was also not catered for. There was no common bond management, there was limited end of day management information, there was no pipeline management, no leads management um, capability. And the IT service providers business rules, they dictated what our product development and interest rates looked like. So we decided that in order to create the experience that we wanted to provide for our members, we would have to build our own new member, new loan journey. So we engaged a fintech company called Luna Connect, and we built what we consider to be a frictionless new member, new loan experience, which gave us the integrated common bond management, pipeline management, and an MI dashboard. And once we got the new member loan, new loan journey right, we then wanted to offer that same frictionless journey or that Amazon experience to our existing members. So we engaged another company to, to develop a robotics program, which would integrate the processing between the Luna platform and the IT service providers platform. So this means we now have integrated counterparty risk and financial risk assessments. We have automated lo uh, loan pipeline management. We've automated leads management capability. We've a real-time MI dashboard. We can create bespoke products and interest rates, and we have the capability for open banking, which we will introduce in the next phase. So if we move on to look at the next slide, what does that journey look like inside the credit union? And we separated the journey into five key stages. The first stage being probably one of the most important is the lead generation. So we moved our consent over to legitimate interest as the basis to communicate with our members. We gather email addresses from the members at every touch point we have with them, and we mine our member database regularly. We personalize our email campaigns, and we send out automated, customized welcome emails outlining the services available to new members, but also including targeted loan products, depending on which of the three categories above they fall into. At the inquiry stage, we can check the common bond of um, eligibility so that we're not asking people who will never be able to get a loan for regulatory reasons from us to apply. We make sure we capture the contact details and the income and expense details early on. And then we send automated prompt emails to the consumer to offer help or encourage them to complete the application form. Under the application stage, the member can move between their devices to complete the application, picking up where they left off as they, as they switch across devices. The CCD documents are captured at the same time as the supporting loan documentation. And we've automated emails, again, prompting the member to supply any outstanding documentation that we might require. And we can fast track any low loan application amounts so that they're not queued and waiting. At the underwriting stage, the loan application is assigned to an underwriter based on their underwriting limits so that, again, we don't have people passing um, loans that are not eligible to, to underwrite. But the underwriter can also move the, the loan for whatever reason, there's an inquiry or there's something they can't deal with to another member of staff or another underwriter. And the manager can also manage the queues and make sure that he can reassign loans if queues are getting backed up. The status of the loan application is available in real time, which means that if the member inquires from a member of the service hub, they don't need to go and find an underwriter to find out what, what status or what's required because they can see it on the screen. And we will then send, we, we email the member advising them when documents are ready to sign, or we will phone, give them a phone call if we're declining the loan. At, at the drawdown stage, the, there's auto loan disbursement upon signature, and then we follow up with an email to thank the member for their business and remind them of any agreed repayments um, that we can monitor, and we will look for feedback at this stage. If we move on to the next slide, we can see how the member experiences this process. The members can choose their application method. If it's online, we can contact the member with a decision within 24 hours, and we will follow up any conversations that we may need to have with an email. If the member wishes to apply for the loan um, in person or on the phone, they will have a guaranteed appointment time. And again, we will follow up any conversations with an email reminder. Uh, 
There's ongoing contact with the member to remind them if document, documents are outstanding, if we require further information, and we will send them a text or an email to let them know when the documents are ready to sign. We will also send a thank you email at the end reminding the member of the terms of the loan and we will also request feedback. So we can move on to the next slide again. As I said, as I said earlier, we use legitimate interest to mine the database for leads using the various search parameters and communications to the members are personalized. If we use the member profiles I mentioned earlier, we can group say by member's age, which will allow us to choose products that are relevant to that member and we use the medium that is most appropriate. For instance, a future member is more likely to be responsive to a digital campaign because they're more open to subscribing to an email list and liking social media posts. Whereas our traditional member may not have an email address and is more likely to respond to a postal campaign. We work closely with the Digital Marketing Agency to create content that is consistent and includes daily posting across social media platforms centred on our key product offering, community resport, any relevant industry content, along with competitions and content which will drive engagement and sharing. And if we move on to the next slide, um, for the past 50 years, the focus of the credit union has been on serving the member in person in branch. And to support the transition to serving members online, we had to pivot our staff from the front line into a lending and digital hub. Staff had to rethink how they interacted with our members, and in some cases they had to change their mindset to see the virtual member as being just as important as the physical member sitting in front of them. The number of staff serving the customers at the branch has reduced, while positions dedicated to serving the digital member has had to increase. Staff in the digital hub manage the telephones, emails, projects, um, administration and the online business which includes direct debits and electronic fund transfers. And the lending hub is centralised with a lending officer located in each of our branches for lending appointments as required. If we move to the next slide, we can see um, that an online operation didn't just happen overnight. Management and board identified the optimum end state. You know, what did we want to look like when we're, when we're finished? And we involved as many people as early as possible in our change process. We asked staff to think about their role. If they were to design their role from scratch today, what would it look like? What were their main pain points? And what would they do differently? And why were they not doing it differently now? We then involve staff in the design of the end state by giving them options and we listen to objections and we try to address them, all the time keeping the eye on the end state vision. We involved all of our stakeholders, there's no point in getting to the end of the process, all the testing is done and on the day you're about to go live you, rem you remember to ask the anti-money laundering officer or your data protection officer or even your teller what do you think of the end state because I guarantee they're going to throw spanners into your work at that stage. And not everyone wants or knows how to participate in change, but it's still important to keep them informed of progress and explain how those changes are going to affect them personally. And we encourage staff who were struggling with the changes to avail of a free EPA service offered by the credit union. And you need to communicate often and those communications need to be honest and they need to be authentic. We held a weekly town hall it wasn't compulsory, but attendance was encouraged. And at this meeting, we kept people informed of the progress, warts and all. We allowed time at the end for Q&As and we answered all the questions as transparently as possible. Some of the Q&As were quite robust and at others, no questions were asked from the floor. But we also provided a platform to allow for anonymous feedback, which we also addressed at the town hall. And these meetings were followed up with a written communication to all staff, which outlined the main points discussed at that meeting. We created a staff intranet and we posted news and progress updates. We tracked targets and we celebrated success on there. And we had interdepartmental focus groups and discussions. And these were important to ensure that everyone who wanted to be involved had a voice. Ideas were discussed and all departments were involved from a very early stage to ensure that we reached workable compromises for any agreed changes. The design sessions had everybody who would be involved in a process included um, and this starts from the person who first takes the call or the email right through to the finance team who has to reconcile the transaction and everybody in between so that we didn't miss a step of a process. And I would, can't 
say you can't test enough, you need to test, you need to test, and you need to test again, because you cannot launch a half-baked process to your consumers, because you're only going to get one chance to impress, and then they're gone. So whilst it's important to have a working group where everybody's involved, you still need a task force, a small group of committed people who will own the process. They will make the decisions about what changes are accepted by the project, and they will drive those changes through the organization. And they will own them, they will, they will deal with any problems that you have, and they will smooth the water. But you also need to be prepared to change your course to get to your destination. During our journey, we'd met several roadblocks and we had to stop and assess the options and rethink our priorities even more than once. And I'm going to end on a quote from John P. Carter, who said, the rate of change is not going to slow down anytime soon. If anything, competition in most industries will probably speed up even more in the next few decades. And I know this has been, been a whistle-stop tour of our change process, but I hope you found our experience informative and thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.